Hi everyone, this is Manisha Sharma Kohli. I'm the head of partner sales engineering at Google Cloud. I've had the great opportunity to work with clients in partners globally in the last couple of decades on their technology adoption as well as digital transformation journeys. Today, we are here to talk about the global shifts in the manufacturing demand, decreasing productivity, and extensively long lead times, which have which are the common trends you know that we see in the industry today, uh, and especially you know they, in the last couple of years they have gone worse with the pandemic. Joining me today in this conversation is Manju Devdas, the founder and CEO of Pluto Seven, one of the premier partners of Google Cloud globally. Manju, welcome. Thank you, Manisha. Hello, everybody. My name is Manjo Devdas, the founder CEO of Luto7, a solution company that ignites innovation and transformation in supply chain using machine learning and AI on Google Cloud. Today, uh, like Manisha mentioned, there are a lot of different disruptions that, that we are seeing, whether it's because of pandemic, which is causing its ripple effect in, uh, in the form of inaccuracies with a demand forecast or, or shipment uh, misses or excess and shortage of inventory. All of this is leading the businesses to wanting to have more and more being in touch with the physical world as the physical world changes in motion, scenarios change, which means they want more real-time data. They want to be able to simulate scenarios where the borders shut down and want to take their technology capabilities to the next level. I'm looking forward for more discussion on these topics with Manisha. Now, in all of this, so Manisha, what is the state of manufacturing industry from your perspective? How is digitization driving these changes? So Manju, as you know, right, manufacturing is a very broad industry. It includes automotive to consumer goods to medical equipment to industrial products. And on the other hand, we have the process manufacturers like pharmaceuticals, food and beverages, and all fall under manufacturing, right? So all these sub-verticals have very unique requirements, priorities, and maturity level. But one thing which we see is common across all is that in the last few years, especially during the pandemic, most of them uh, have faced broken supply chains, right? They've seen longer lead times and they've seen lower productivity. Moreover, we have seen an increased demand from end customers and users. They're all going completely digital. And that is why the manufacturers are now looking at how do I know the complete 360 degree profile of my customer and reach out to them directly instead of going through the traditional dealer or distribution networks. We believe that for any manufacturing company, before they embark on the digitization journey, it's very important to bring their own internal functions together, right? So for example, the R&D department in a manufacturing company would care about making the product engineering and design better. When you move to manufacturing operations or customer operations, they would want to you know, care about reducing cost or reducing lead time or improving quality or maybe ensuring better customer transactions or smoother customer transactions. The interesting thing about these functions is that all of them are generating huge amounts of data and that data is sitting in their own departmental silos. And hence the organization in general is not able to leverage the true potential of it. So through digitization, we believe that our first step should be to look at how we bring all these functions together uh, and how we bring this data together, right? The holy grail for a lot of these companies would be to get the data which is getting generated when the product is being used and feed it back to the R&D processes, right? So I think that has been uh, our observation on the trends in this industry, Manju. And talking about you know, different functions with a, within a manufacturing organization, I wanted to ask you this question, right? It's not easy to ensure reliability you know, and smooth operations across people, processes, and manufacturing operations. A lot of things can go wrong especially when we talk about the manufacturing you know, in a factory within the four walls, the manufacturing floors can get plagued with a lot of technical challenges. So how do you see customers leverage technologies like AI to streamline the processes and plan the fallout better? Great question, uh, Manisha. Like you mentioned, enterprises are trying to bring their functions together. 
data happens to be the glue to bring those functions. Now, when you get the data in one place, it's usually not for the sake of just bringing the data together. It is for solving specific problems. Like we are working with a large CPG company or FMCG company as it's called in other part, in with the preventive maintenance use case, where when will the machine go down? So that they can plan the labor, they can plan the downtime. That's a direct saving of, uh, of labor cost and also better yield uh, in the conveyor belt. Now, these are all translating the data, it is translating into money saving and reducing disruptions. Similarly, customers are applying, like when you take a, a supplier data, and when you combine that with your demand data, now you're trying to rank your suppliers better using machine learning models for a, for a beauty product company, where they looked at the traditional suppliers who are no longer performing as well during COVID-19, and they started ranking and re-ranking them using machine learning models, and were surprised to see how certain suppliers whom they ignored are actually performing better. Now, in all of this, right, uh, what is given is customers want to be able to connect real time with their manufacturing floors. They're putting cameras and sensors and, and instead of a labor watching uh, a dent in a, in a sheet metal, they want to do quality or visual inspection using in video intelligence technology like we did for a steel company. This could be a, considered a quality assurance uh, use case. Like this, customers are looking at many different use cases in which, and those use cases that they're solving are the ones where they can see the ROI, and translating into money savings. So now Manisha, now with respect to how has Google been able to differentiate itself from other offerings in the marketplace and, and helping solve the customer problem, how do you see that happening? Yeah, Manju, and I was uh, very encouraged to hear what you just said. You know, we are also seeing those kind of trends and, you know, use cases coming from our customers to us. And not many people realize it, but Google is also a manufacturing company, right? We make our own pixels, Chromebooks, our data center components and servers are our own. So to a large extent, we know the challenges of manufacturing companies, and we have solved those challenges for ourselves. Now, for our customers, our strategy is to enable digital manufacturing, you know, and of course, by leveraging the power of data analytics and AI, and we call it a digital thread, right? A digital thread is, you know, something which connects the equipment used in the manufacturing process, uh, such, an, such as an excavator on a construction site, to the factory where the products are manufactured, right? So for connected equipment, like you just listed, you know, uh, we provide out-of-the-box solutions for predictive maintenance, service and spare part prediction, remote servicing. And on the other hand, within the factory, we provide solutions to improve the operational efficiencies. Exactly what you mentioned, you know, automating visual inspection and quality checks, energy optimization, reducing the cost and waste of manufacturing. And finally, we also provide intelligent manufacturing suite, which helps manufacturers to build connected intelligent products, which when leave the factory, not only give a better experience to the customers through the remote automatic updates, but also gives new revenue streams for the manufacturers by cross-selling and upselling new features in the product, right? Underlying all this is our infrastructure, which is unique because this is the same infrastructure that Google uses to run its billion user plus platforms like YouTube and Maps and Android. And it's the same network which we own, the data center properties that we own is what we are now making available to our you know, customers. And it provides them the super low latency and highly secure and reliable services. So I think this is where I believe uh, you know, you, Google has unique differentiators. And then, you know, with the power of Pluto 7 and Google Cloud coming together, you know, we are absolutely ready to solve any complex challenges. So Manju, I want to ask you this question because you come from a very strong supply chain background, right? So what's your guidance to, the, to our, you know, viewers and our manufacturing customers, especially the supply chain leaders? How can they build resilient, adaptive and efficient supply chains in their organizations? Great and a very important uh, question, which is on top of uh, many C-level executives around the world, uh, Manisha. Uh, when we think about uh, the challenges or, or what keeps them up in the night, 
it is building a resilient supply chain. They know that COVID-19 is going to take different shape. There was a new variant just announced a few days back. Now, the world is going to change and it's going to keep evolving. How do they adapt their supply chain? How do they adapt to the scenarios so that it's more resilient? Part of it is through getting more constant feed and more real-time feed of data and enabling decisions so that call it a, a, a supply chain twin as Google offers Google Cloud supply chain twin or uh, in a form of an IoT sensor giving a signal of something changing in the supply chain supply chain, so that they can plan their inventory better or they can sense the demand and forecast the demand much faster so that they can react to the world. Now, not only that, when customers are looking at it, whether it's a container cost going up or trucks not being available, they are now looking being close to the same physical world so that they can plan their trucks better or the last mile deliveries better. When you add it all up, it comes down to, can I get end-to-end -end visibility of my, of my supply chain? And they translate some of the things that they hear, whether it's from a Gartner or, or, or any of the research firms who indicate that you need to bring uh, your process together, like you mentioned earlier. They look at data as the centralizing of data as one mechanism to make those functions talk to each other. In essence, now the decisions are no longer in silos. Decisions are going across functions as well. So Manisha, do you want to add anything to it? I completely agree with you, Manju. I think what you just said makes a lot of sense. And I think, uh, as you rightly said, we also observe the same behavior, you know. Uh, our customers today are focused on innovation. They are looking for a better time to value. They want to be better connected to their end customers. They want to reach out to the customers directly, right? Uh, technology just happens to be an enabler. So it's not a question of whether we have the right technology available. The answer is yes. But I think more than technology is that cultural change, you know, in the in the manufacturing organization. Manufacturing being a you know, traditional you know, organization, I think the change is not easy. But I think for a lot of customers, what we recommend to them is that even before you think about it, you have to first think about culturally how you are going to bring your different functions together, what kind of upskilling is required, right? And that all together you know, combined will really help them uh, you know, embark on the digital transformation journey. And we are there to help, right? So I I'm sure our viewers today uh, would have got some uh, ideas and, you know, uh, some cues from what we discussed today. And, you know, uh, my request to them is if you have any challenges, priorities, and if anything we said today resonates with what you are trying to solve, do reach out to us and we'll be happy to solve some complex problems with you. Thank you so much, Manju. I think I loved this discussion and I think um, I'm sure our viewers would have, uh, you know, taken taken back some uh, some important messages here as well. Uh, so thank you so much for joining the conversation, Manju. Thank you, Manisha, and thanks for the partnership with Google Cloud. Thank you. Thank you.